Now, last week, uh, Dr. Aaron Mutsualedi, accompanied by the Deputy Minister of Health, Dr. Joe Patla, and the Gauteng MEC of Health, Dr. Gwen Ramokopa, welcomed back Cuban-trained medical students who are returning to the country. The 265th uh, fifth-year students, uh, medical students, returned from their final uh, six-year studies and reintegration into the South African health system. The training of the students is one of the national strategies that's been developed by the ministry to strengthen the public health sector. Uh, Melody Mahalimane, as well as uh, Ram, uh, Matsobane uh, Masobos, uh, joins us here to tell us more about uh, their experience. Um, welcome. And thanks Thank for speaking you. to us this morning. Thank you. Thank you for so having how's us. it been? You haven't been back for a long time. After, you know, quite a lengthy absence, what was your first thing that you wanted to do back on home soil? Well, when I arrived home, the first thing that I wanted to do is just to get home and be with my family because they've been waiting since 2012 when I last uh, saw them. And it was, it was amazing. As much as we arrived at night, they couldn't sleep. When I, I got home, they were still there with their, you know, night dress, waiting for me to arrive. And I arrived safe, thank God. And yeah, here I am. I, st I still feel like it's not real, like I'm going back to Cuba again. But we'll see. Melody? Well, um, I'm just very happy that I'm back home as well. And yo, the weather just shocked me. It was really cold. That's the first thing I experienced when I got back. And I was glad that everybody was there. And I was very happy. We just got home. And the first thing I did was shower. <laughs> After the long flight, you actually feel very dirty. So I took a shower. And I got to sleep with my sister and my mom. So that was amazing for me. I enjoyed the family. So uh, the decision, do you know, to go to Cuba... Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Was it an easy decision or was it something that your hand was partly forced? <laughs> well, um, due to the fact that, you know, you apply for medicine and then you get rejected here. It, well, you have to find another way. And then I applied for the program. And in the beginning, I remember we had my mom was like, no, you can't go. I'm scared for you. You're so young. I was 19 years old. But my sister helped and she spoke to her. And eventually I also agreed. I love experiencing. So I really wanted to go it's an opportunity of a lifetime to travel to another country learn another language and study medicine at the same time but uh, Matabane it must have been daunting because uh, you had to learn another language first and foremost and then studying in that language how was that experience <laughs> well it, it, it's very funny because I remember uh, I was one of the last group that arrived in Cuba where we were a bit late and it's expected that, you know, on your first year, your f the first six months you must study Spanish. The second six months you must study like a, like a preparation yeah. of medicine. But since I arrived later, I was only left with six months. So I have to divide it by two. I only learned my Spanish in, uh, in three months. And I made it. I made it. Uh, the, my first year of medicine, it wasn't that difficult. It's just so much hard work you know you must dedicate your time you, you wouldn't sleep because it's not like you study medicine in english mm. the the questions the lectures you are given in are in spanish so you have to listen and when you study take the dictionary you know you have every materials translation and everything just to make sure that you grab everything preparing yourself for the test and exams and what was it like in class, in lectures? Uh, you know, any special treatment or did you just have to roll with the punches? Yeah, to roll with the punches. There was no special treatment whatsoever. And it was really funny at times, the, pro uh, the prof, see I'm already speaking Spanish, the prof would <laughs> ask you a question and you would stand there for five minutes trying to think, how do I reply? And the words would not come. But with time, we developed the skill to speak the language and here we are. So it's, it's really worth it and it's really fun. You get to learn the language and medicine and it's it's a great experience really and you have to actually learn in spanish and english you, you use the english to understand and the spanish for for the yourself. exam mm -hmm. so so you actually wrote your exam in spanish mm. yes we wrote uh, all our exams since i arrived in cuba uh, to start with uh, like the language they teach you spanish in spanish, in spanish. you know <laughs> it's not that thing of trying to translate for you and i was in a worst class because my my lecture she was speaking very fast so I had to always, <laughs> but I have a story to tell when it comes to Spanish because most of my Spanish was contributed by a, a cleaner. You know, I just met this guy cleaning 
and he knew a bit of English. And I told him that, please help me out because this Spanish is just driving me crazy. And he told me that, you know what, I'll help you. But the deal was that I helped him clean and he helped me in Spanish. So it was great. Sounds fair. It was fair. <laughs> and of course, you know, um, just thinking about it now, mm -hmm. uh, do you think that this experience has given you an advantage yes. over students perhaps studying in the country? Well, you learn a language. Apart from learning the language, you get to experience different cultures. I mean, it's not only South Africans who are there. We have South Africans, Angolese, people from Congo, people from Chad. We have people from Brazil. You have people from the Caribbean islands, just to name a few. You have Americans. So all of that integration really helps you. Your mindset changes about a lot of things. So it was, it was, it, it's an orientation that everybody needs. And I feel like it has changed us a lot. You've actually grown more. Mm. So definitely. And, uh, you know, then, of course, we read the odd article mm. about some students, uh, you know, struggling, perhaps others misbehaving. Do you know any of that? And, and, and just how big a part of your student life was that? The truth is, uh, when you talk of students having difficulties, uh, students uh, misbehaving, uh, it happens everywhere. Like in South Africa, we see such things happening. I mean, like. You can't expect to send 1,000 students and expect all of them to behave the same. We come from different cultures. Some people, they've never been out of the country before, not even out of their province before. So obviously when they get there trying to acclimatize with the environment, they will end up like uh, being a bit confused, you know. So I would say it was because of that. And apart from that, there are students who, whom when they get to Cuba, it was difficult for them to study. But with time, because... I consider students who studied in Cuba hard workers, you know. Mm. With time, you get to work hard. You get to remember that you are not the only person who's working. There are people back home who are watching you. Your parents, you know, your friends, everyone around, the community is supporting us. Like, even when we came home, you could have seen, like, at the airport, it was packed with people. When I got home, my neighbors, everyone was happy that I'm back and I'm about to finish, like, my career. Well, uh, Matsubane and Melody, thanks so much for coming through and sharing some of your experiences with us this morning. I think it is important and also just going forward for some students who may be thinking of following in your footsteps. And uh, those were, of course, two of the country's medical students who were received back in the country by the Minister of Health from their medical studies in Cuba. And uh, we're going to go to a break and when we come back, we'll be wrapping it all up.